Now let's learn about the reintrant locks. Reintrant lock is one of the many implementations of lock interface in Java. It allows a thread to acquire the same lock multiple times without causing any deadlocks. What this means is that a thread which holds a lock can acquire it again without blocking itself if the lock is reintrant. In contrast, with a non reintrant lock, an attempt to acquire the lock again within the same thread without reducing it first would typically result in blocking. It could also potentially cause a deadlock situation if it's not handled properly. How does this work? The way this works is that the locking mechanism keeps track of the lock being held by a thread. In the case of non intrant locks, attempting to acquire the lock again within the same thread typically results in blocking the thread. However, in the case of reintrant lock, the lock mechanism allows the same thread to acquire the lock multiple times without blocking itself. Effectively, the held count for the lock by the given thread is incremented since the lock is already acquired, there is no sense of reacquiring it. This is achieved by maintaining a count of how many times the lock has been acquired by the same thread. The lock is only released when the count reaches zero. It indicates that the thread has released the lock the same number of times it has acquired it. You may be wondering why and in what situations a thread would need to acquire a lock again without releasing the lock. Here is the answer. Imagine a scenario where a thread invokes another method or code block which also requires the same lock to maintain consistency in the multi-threaded context. This pattern is quite common in complex implementations where methods call other methods within the same class. These methods require synchronized access to some shared resource and in such situations reintrant locks are quite useful and in fact very much needed. So with that in place, let's have a very quick code demonstration of using the reintrant locks. So to begin with, I have created this class called as reintrant lock demo. And here are the two fields that we are going to need. So in this line, we are initializing the reintrant lock. The way to do this is by calling new reintrant lock. There are other variations of this particular constructor wherein we could pass the fairness criteria and all those things. We will learn about those in a while. So for now, we have created the lock and then we have a variable called as shared data, which is initialized to zero. Next, we have a method A. What this method does is it's going to increment the value of the shared data and then it's going to call another method, which is method B. And uh, method A needs to get hold of the lock for this section of the code block that is incrementing the shared data and then calling the method B. And finally, this particular lock is released. Now let's see what we have in the method B. So in the method B, again, we are going to work on the shared data and the way it's being implemented is the shared data value is getting decremented, but we need some sort of lock and that lock is going to protect this particular section, which is decrementing the shared data and printing the value. And finally, we call the unlock method. So what we see is that we have a method A, which is getting called by some thread and it's going to acquire a lock. But in the same block, when it's uh, being protected by the lock, there is a call to method B and that method B as well is going to need that lock because that is also handling some sort of critical section. So this is the reason that we have made use of the reintrant lock. So this particular thread is already holding this lock, but at this point of time, this will need to acquire the lock again. And if it was not a reintrant lock, we could have encountered a blocking scenario and that could have also led to a deadlock. So that is the reason we have used the reintrant lock. Now let's see the further implementation. So we have a main method and what we are doing is we are uh, creating uh, and starting multiple threads, which are essentially uh, five threads and we are calling the start on those. So let's try to run this and see the output. So here is the output. 
that method a had shared it as one method b had shared it as zero method a and method b so and so forth so the key takeaway is that we are able to deal with the shared data value in a concurrent uh, environment in a concurrent fashion in a multi-threaded context and the same thread is going to need to acquire a log multiple times and that is the reason we have used the reentrant log so at any given point of time let's say here if you would have called log dot get hold count then the value would be two so essentially what is happening is the first time the lock is acquired here and the second time the lock is acquired here so essentially this thread has acquired this lock twice but under the hood of course it has been acquired just once it is just the count which is getting incremented and which is two and finally this lock will be unlocked it will be released so the count will become one and then the call comes here and finally this lock dot unlock will decrement the value further and it will become as zero and that is where we will conclude that the given thread has released this particular lock so uh, that is for the code demonstration now let's look further into certain other aspects of reentrant lock which is the lock fairness so reentrant lock provides a constructor in which we can pass a boolean value for the fairness of the lock when this value is true the lock is called a fair lock if it's false it's called as an unfair lock by default the reentrant locks are unfair let's understand this fairness with an example imagine there are a couple of threads which are trying to acquire a lock among all the threads which are competing for the lock let's say thread 1 gets hold of the lock all the remaining threads go to some sort of waiting queue after a certain time thread 1 releases the lock by calling the unlock method at that point of time one of the locks in the wait queue will get a chance to acquire the lock imagine that out of all the threads in the wait queue thread 2 has been waiting the longest for acquiring the lock then if the reentrant lock is fair thread 2 will get a chance to acquire the lock and do its processing in the case of unfair reentrant locks there is no deterministic guarantee as to which thread gets to acquire the lock as a sweet side effect the unfair locks could potentially provide a better performance as compared to the fair locks what is the reason well they avoid the overhead associated with maintaining a wait queue and enforcing some sort of deterministic ordering now let's learn about a few important methods of the reentrant lock the first one is get hold count this method returns an integer which is the number of times the current thread has acquired the lock in other words it indicates how many times the current thread has successfully acquired the lock without releasing it the next one is the try lock and as the name suggests it is an approach where we request a thread to try acquiring a lock the result is a boolean which tells if a thread was successfully acquired or not if the outcome is true we can proceed with processing and if false we can do something else and what we gain from this approach is if the lock has not been acquired then we are not blocked rather we can do some sort of other processing as well in our code there is another variation of try lock method which accepts time out and time unit so this is an overloaded variation of the try lock method using this method we can request a thread to acquire the lock and be blocked for the given time duration if the lock is being held by some other thread we hope that the lock becomes available during the waiting time period and that's where the lock is acquired by the thread which has called the try lock with duration and if not then of course the output of this particular try lock is a false and then we can do something else because we have not acquired the lock due to x and y reasons well try lock has a problem even if your reentrant lock is fair and try lock is called by a thread at the moment the lock is released by some other thread in this scenario the waiting threads for this lock are not given the priority the new thread which made the try lock call gets to acquire the lock the work around for this problem is to pass a time out value of zero time units and this will ensure that the fairness criteria of the lock is honored then we have a couple of auditory methods so we have something like is held by current thread and it returns a boolean which tells if the current thread is holding a given lock or not the next one is get queue length 
and it tells the length of the wait queue which is the number of threads these two in particular are mainly used for debugging and uh, profiling purposes but having said that if there is a need in your code implementation or in your business logic you could surely have these methods at your disposal the final one in our list is the most important one so the new condition as we saw earlier this returns a condition on the given lock and what it does is it helps in orchestrating the interaction between the thread and the lock so that should be it for the reintroduction lock